As we head into the weekend, you'll be able to see a wide range of art from students across Greeley and Evans. Reporter Zvi Gutierrez has all the information. With the school year coming to an end in two months for many, art teachers from across Greeley and Evans are coming together to celebrate students' hard work. For the month of March, Greeley Evans District 6 is celebrating Youth Art Month by hosting their 8th annual Art Walk. The event showcases artwork created by hundreds of students within the district from kindergarten through 12th grade and over 50 creative teachers facilitating art, dance, and music. There will even be artwork from UNC and AIM students. Most of the artwork is being displayed in a wide range of small businesses in downtown Greeley. This is my favorite time of the year because I get to partner with a business and Marie is fantastic. So I get to come uh, downtown Greeley and just, you know, get to know Greeley a little bit better, get to know um, a local business and, uh, and show off the kids artwork. They're so proud when they walk in. Many of the displays will remain up throughout the month of March, which allows ample time to view the art and visit the participating businesses that are in and around downtown. It helps um, bring in a whole uh, range of community that we normally wouldn't be able to reach. Um, it helps us engage in the community and then the community to be aware that we're here and just be able to come in and see the different shops and what we all have to offer. So it really helps our business and become more aware that we're here. With nearly 30 different hosting locations, be sure to visit all the amazing art produced by local students and teachers. This is the V Guterres for Bear News. Thanks, V. Today isn't the only start of the Greeley Art Walk. It also marks the beginning of Women's History Month. The Center for Women's and Gender Equity is hosting the Women's History Month Alley Advocacy Panel on Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The panel will consist of one staff member from each cultural and resource center on campus. You don't want to miss the opportunity to discover how to be an ally and advocate for the women with a night of fun, food, and real conversations. Having a pet while in college can be hard. You have to figure out where it will be going during breaks if you go out of town and how to afford all their necessities on a small budget. So a lot of students avoid getting pets altogether. If you're in that boat, but you'd love to have an animal around, fostering may not be a bad idea for you. Reporter Shelley Swartz visited NOCO Human Society to find out more about fostering. As winter slowly pulls away, warm weather isn't the only thing arriving in Greeley. For NOCO Humane, climbing temperatures mark the beginning of bottle baby season, the time of the year where litters of young kittens and puppies begin pouring into shelters. Most bottle babies are kittens under six weeks old that need care every few hours that shelters can't provide without overnight staff. That's where fosters come in. NOCO Humane is urgently searching for fosters willing to take on the round-the-clock care that bottle babies need since they can't eat independently. If that kind of commitment doesn't fit your lifestyle, shelters have lots of other animals that could benefit from foster homes. Animals that need emotional or behavioral support to bottle baby kittens or animals recovering from surgery can all be placed in homes. Alice Hamlin, a foster transfer coordinator, says that fosters act as an important stepping stone. You get to know that you are playing a special part in that animal's life that not a lot of people get to experience of being the stepping stone to take them from again sad, scared, stressed in a shelter, and then taking them to that point of being happy, being themselves, being comfortable, and going into someone's home and making a lasting impact. 
So what kind of skills do you need to become a foster? None, really. The shelter will provide you with all necessary training as well as all of the supplies you need, so there's no financial commitment from the foster. There are only a few big requirements. You must be at least 21, have a place to keep the foster animals away from your own pets, and have fewer than eight pets. Fostering isn't only beneficial for animals, Hamlin says that it's also good for people. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I felt just kind of disconnected from everything, and for me, fostering was the first kind of way for me to get a step back into the world and feel like I was doing something that mattered. So if you're looking to help animals or help yourself, fostering may be a stepping stone to a new journey. With Bear News, I'm Shelly Schwartz. If you're interested in fostering an animal, head to the NoCo Humane website for more information. Thanks, Shelly. Up next, we have reporter Drew Peters with a story on UNC's study abroad program. Take it away, Drew. Thanks, Sophia. And Gabby, yes, it is Drew, but I guess I can forgive you this once. So, uh, if you're ever passing by Wilson Hall, let your mind wander for a second. You may imagine neon-lit streets of Tokyo or the taste of Italy's world-famous cuisine. That's because Wilson Hall is home to the Office of Global Engagement, and they're here to help students learn more about ways to study abroad. UNC offers th over 300 programs in more than 60 countries, and K-12 French education student Catherine Dobson recently took advantage of these opportunities to sharpen her teaching skill set while also studying abroad in France. I got to learn like vocabulary that they used, and that was something that I never really experienced before. Um, so that's something I really, really enjoyed at the university using the study abroad, abroad program. She was also introduced to a, a new community of friends and explored some of the amazing sites France has to offer. I really liked that I was able to make a community there. I was able to make new friends with people from all around the world. Um, a lot of people that were there were from Europe and that was really fun to be able to talk to them. Studying abroad is a big commitment though and Catherine thinks there's some things students should know before booking their tickets. There was lots of paperwork. I mean, I signed up to be a student at a completely different university, so there was a lot of things I had to do to be able to do that. Um. If you're interested in studying abroad with UNC, you can schedule an appointment online with an advisor or visit the Office of Global Engagement in Wilson Hall for more information. Back to you, Sophia. Thanks, Drew. This past weekend, I got the opportunity to visit a UNC program that is truly accepting of people of all kinds of backgrounds. Take a look. Oh! The UNC Goal Program, Go On and Learn, is an inclusive higher education program dedicated to assist students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The students and team leaders participate in weekly and bi-weekly events that contain fun competition where prizes can be won. Some of these challenges include a balance test, donut eating contest, bracelet making, a mummy wrap, cup stacking, and a cotton ball game although some students took the easy way out. Emmy Carlson, a junior team leader, is passionate about the connections that Goal provides. Something that I think that I've learned is how important being there for one another is. You know, I think just building relationships with people in college just really makes the experience so much better. And so like I've made tons of friendships through Goal and I know that uh, students have made friendships as well. And so just like creating those relationships is just like really shown me how important it is to have people in your life. Some students are finding that being involved in Goal has helped encourage them in their studies. The Goal program has helped me like expand like horizons and figuring out that I actually like school. It pushed me to work hard and graduate on time. Having fun isn't the only enjoyed aspect of goal. The group leaders play a pivotal role in the connection with the students. My favorite part of the group program is um, meeting all the mentors. The team leaders in the GOAL program have found that being able to connect personally with the students and their struggles has allowed them to not only better assist them, but form friendships along the way. So in special education, which I major in, I've had a past with it. And I've seen what it's like in classes with students with, with disabilities, and I have ADD myself. So when I was in high school, I was in those classes. So I saw how the teachers were and how my peers were, and I, and I loved it ever since. But with the GOAL program, I learned how to help the students as a teacher, which I want to be. So it really shaped me because I love each and every one of them. 
they're, they're really good friends of mine. This isn't a job to me, it's, it's just a joy to be there. Goal isn't just a program for education assistance. <laughs> it's a family that bonds unique individuals together to create a fun, laughter-filled environment. For more information on the Goal program, you can visit their office in McKee or visit the UNC Goal website. Up next, we have Sam with the weather. Take it away, Sam. Thanks guys. Well, we've had a gorgeous Friday as we take a look outside campus right now. You can tell it's nice, sunny, and 64 degrees, but looking at our highs for, or take a look outside. It's 64 degrees, it's nice, sunny, go outside, enjoy it, but taking a look across the rest of northern Colorado for our highs, 64 degrees is our high today, and mainly the rest of the front range is feeling those nice 60s. But if you got plans to go out tonight, I got your evening planner covered because tonight is the night to make those plans go out tonight because look at this 63 this afternoon and dipping down into the upper 40s and it's going to be nice and clear by the end of the tonight tonight but tomorrow's going to be even better than today for our highs for tomorrow going to be up in the upper 60s for most of the front range and northern colorado up in cheyenne and Ugalala, also feeling those nice 60s but for Sunday, I'm tracking maybe a dip in our temperatures. Taking a look at our U.S. outlook, snow for most of the western U.S. But right here is I'm tracking this cold front. And this cold front's going to take a dip in our temperatures and even maybe have a chance for some slight snow to come in Sunday night. So taking a look for our seven-day forecast. Enjoy today. Enjoy tomorrow. But Sunday, we're going to be taking that dip with that slight chance of snow. And we're going to stay nice and cool for the rest of the week here in Greeley. After the break, we'll go to Nathan with sports. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> my grown up, grown up, in every way, in every way, care and take care of you. You're my grown up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown up, and you know I care. Cause it's you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you. Last night, UNC women's basketball hosted Weber State. The first half was competitive, with the Bears taking the lead 43-33. During the second half, Weber State caught up to the Bears, scoring 20 points. UNC ultimately won the game 72-64. to Obviously, we want to go and finish these three out and go 3-0, and especially heading into the tournament. Um, and I think too, obviously, it's in the back of my head that there's only a few of these left and it's emotional when you think about it, but I try to tune it out when I step on that floor because I have to give my all and I'm going to give my all. UNC men's basketball traveled to Weber State and what would be an overtime thriller. The Bears had a three-point lead to close out the first half. However, in the second half, the Wildcats tied the game, sending it into overtime. The Bears lost the game 81-85. to In the softball world, senior Aaron McCavness through the program's first perfect game in program history, allowing no runs, hits, or walks. She also struck out eight batters. McCavness earned Big Sky Player of the Week. The Bears will host the Colorado Classic at home this upcoming weekend. UNC also has another Big Sky Player of the Week. Freshman Pietro Boris earned Big Sky Golfer of the Week honors, posting the third lowest 54 hole in program history. Boris tallied 17 birdies, bringing the Bears total to 839 the lowest team score in program history. That's it for Sporks this week, Bears. I'm Nathan Kitchen, and we'll head back to the desk with Sophia. Thanks, Nathan. Do you like green eggs and ham, Sam I am? Are you and me one, Mr. Grinch? If you're a fan of Dr. Seuss, Seussical the Musical will transform the Langworthy Theater into a vibrant playground of color and imagination this weekend. There's a showing tonight and tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. and a showing Sunday at 2 p.m. The musical is bringing to life some of the most beloved characters from Dr. Seuss's most iconic books, including Horton Hears a Who, The Cat in the Hat, and of course, Green Eggs and Ham. With catchy musical numbers and lively choreography, the show will transport the audience into the fantastical world of Whoville, The Jungle of Newell, and beyond. Tickets can be purchased online or at the theater's box office. Don't miss your chance to experience the magic of Seussical the Musical. If you're graduating this spring, pay attention to this announcement. 
Applications for graduation must be submitted and approved by March 3rd to ensure that your name is printed in the commencement program. Please be aware that there is a $50 fee that goes with your submission. Applications can be found at the UNC Registrar's Office website. If you miss a deadline, don't worry, applications are still open until May 3rd. That's it for our show today, Bears. Thank you to my co-host, Gabby Lopez, for joining me today. Thank you, Sophia, for having me. And I hear you have a special announcement to say. I do have a special announcement. Mom, happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right, Bears, that's it for our show today. I'm your host, Sophia Tavanello. Have a wonderful weekend.